Hello and welcome back to another episode of Notion Bonsai and today we're going to be doing a double air layering. Alright, so this is the tree that we're going to be working on here today. This is my great big apple tree. And as you can see on it already, I have already done an air layering to this tree. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. You see with a regular air layering, what we would usually do is after the bag has filled with roots, we would then sever that from the parent tree, put this top piece in a pot, let that develop lots of roots, then come back later and organize the roots and then treat it as you would any other bonsai tree. But today what we're going to do is something which is known as a double air layering and it's a little bit more advanced but I'm going to keep this as easily to understand as possible. First, let's get off this foil to see the roots. Oh wow, okay, look at this. Oh my goodness, this thing is absolutely full of roots. And now you may be asking yourself, what is a double air layering? And a double air layering is essentially whenever we train the roots of a tree of an air layering while they're still on and attached to the parent tree. The fact that this bag has filled with roots in such a short space of time means I have the rest of the year to continue developing the roots while they're on this tree. But the first thing I would like to do is open up this bag and just loosen up all of that sphagnum just so that we have all the roots. And just before I do this, the tools that we're going to be using in this video today are some tweezers, root printing shears, wire cutters, a mini saw, some concave branch cutters, some gin pliers, branch cutters, and a chopstick. And the wire that I'll be keeping on hand today is just some two millimeter aluminum bonsai wire. If at any point the roots dry out, there's a really good chance that they will die. So just keeping a spray bottle nearby every so often, give it a mist, especially if it's like a really sunny, hot day or it's really windy, you can find that water can evaporate a lot quicker in them kind of conditions. Let's get this open now. So I'm just gonna untwist the wire and you can really see the benefit of not trimming this wire. Just leave it long so that when you can take it off, it's so much easier and you can reuse the wire. And look at these super healthy roots, wow. Before I start working at these, I'm just gonna spray them with water to see if I can loosen up that sphagnum. Really give it a good spray. You can't overwater it at this point. Then I'm just going to come in with the tweezers and slowly remove as much of the sphagnum as I can. I'm just gonna test the roots to see how brittle they are. Now they're a little bit flexible, so that's okay. If you feel that the roots aren't long enough and they haven't developed enough yet, wrap it back up and come back in another few weeks. There's no harm in just having a little bit of patience to develop it and do it correctly. Otherwise you may risk it dying. And the reason why we would double air layer like this with bonsai is because you can essentially get twice as quick nibari development or the root flare development versus cutting it off, putting it into a pot and then having to wait an entire year before you can prune the roots. Now this way does come with a little bit more risk, but I think the risk is really worth it when you look at the reward that you're gonna get with a beautiful root flare just as you sever it off the tree. And I would say to do this as early as possible if you can in the year, because if you start doing this procedure and then winter approaches and this ball of moss freezes, then roots probably will not survive. It is the 22nd of June for me as of today. So I know I have the entire July and August for this tree to continue pushing out new roots, which is why I feel it's okay to do it and safe to do it at this time of year. But if it was late July, August, then I wouldn't risk it. I would probably do a regular air layering by just cutting it. I really love this process. I think it's quite therapeutic where you can just go around, gently work on the tree. You can also come in with a chopstick and loosen the sphagnum that way. I find that works quite well as the wood is quite soft on the little roots. So I have taken off quite a lot of the sphagnum on this air layering. There's just a little bit left in the center here. I'm just gonna blast it with a hose to try and get all the rest of the sphagnum off of it. Ah! 
And now that I have exposed all the roots, what I'm going to do is prune back some of the long roots to encourage more root subdivisions. And in turn, this will give us a lot more thicker and fuller nabari. And it will all be coming from the one root plane. So you see here, as it flares out from the trunk, there's some here that's a little bit too high. I'm just gonna get rid of. But I just wanna make sure the nabari is all flaring out nicely. So any roots that I feel are growing a little bit too high and they're not on where I want the root plane to be developed, I'll just remove them. Like say up here, there's a few. So I'm just gonna shorten these ones here. Turn this around. There's some more here we can shorten. If you have done double layering like this yourself, please let me know how you got on with it. If you have any tips on how to improve it down in the comments. I'm fairly new to this idea, but I did have it suggested to me, so I thought I would try it. I'm gonna shorten this here. Let's shorten them roots there. All right. From this point, what I'm going to do is just wrap all of this back up in more sphagnum. I'm just gonna prepare some of the sphagnum as it's quite dry at the moment. And I'm just gonna rehydrate it in a bowl of water here. But before I put it into this bowl of water, what I'm going to do is just add into this water some root booster. Then I'm just gonna stir this up and this will just help the tree develop roots a little bit quicker. And it will also help with some of that root transplant shock if the tree sort of got a shock from us pruning them. And now this root boosting substance is gonna be absorbed into the sphagnum. You don't have to do this step, but I definitely like to like really ensure that this is gonna root again. And we're gonna use the same piece of plastic that we used last time. And the only thing that I would say about the root booster is that whatever kind that you do get, just make sure that it doesn't burn roots like a fertilizer would. And now at this point, I would say, as we apply the sphagnum to the roots, just be careful of the little delicate roots here. Let's just cover this in some foil to keep the light out of it. As we know, roots grow a lot better in the dark. And now we're gonna come back and look at this and I'd say another one or two months time. Today is the 16th of July, 2023. And it's approximately one month later since I did this double air layering. This bag is almost full of roots again. So whenever you cut it off the tree, you don't wanna open the bag or anything first. We're gonna do that after. We just wanna make sure everything in here stays nice and protected as we saw. So I'm gonna find a nice spot to begin the sawing just a little bit under the air layering. We can always come back later and fix it up. I can just break it there. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That's a little bonsai. This is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like after. And it really makes the parent tree look significantly shorter. Look at this. This could potentially be a little bonsai on its own, or we could just keep air layering it next year. All right, so the top one off. And to me, that's looking really good. I'm gonna to begin to pry off some of the sphagnum. And I'm really gonna take my time with this. There's still a good bit on it at the top here, but really what I wanted to do is reveal this stump underneath the root mass so that I can come in as close as I possibly can and remove all of this. Because first of all, this isn't really doing anything for the tree. And second of all, we wanna be able to get this in a quite shallow pot. And if this is here in the way, that's not gonna happen. So we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna take these branch cutters. I'm just gonna bite away at the side here until I can get in underneath. All right, so now I can just clean up the cut underneath. And right now I'm using the concave branch cutters. They're a little bit more rounded than the branch cutters. That just lets me get in even closer. So I've taken the bottom of this up as far as I can possibly go with this. And I'm really happy with how this is looking. Now I'm gonna cover the bottom here in a little bit of cut putty. This is just something I like to do. You don't have to do this. I just like to seal that anyways. Oh yeah, also don't forget, the sphagnum moss that you take off of your air layer can be reused. So I'm gonna take this, put it in a little container and keep it for more projects that involve sphagnum moss. There's a few different directions we can go with when choosing a pot for this tree. What I would honestly like to do is put this straight into a pond basket and allow the roots to develop quite rapidly and fill that pot before coming back and transferring it from that 
then down into a smaller bonsai pot. I don't have a pond basket free at the moment as I've used them all up on other trees. But as I don't have one right now, I'm gonna put it into a bonsai pot. And when choosing a pot, I could put it into something like this. This is quite a small pot. If I try and squeeze this into this little pot, I'll first of all damage the roots which is not a good thing. And I also won't leave any room for the tree to grow into and develop. I'm basically constricting everything and the tree won't have a chance to get better, especially the nabari. I want the nabari to get thicker, spread out more and promote lots of lateral growing roots. And putting it into a pot like this will promote ones growing straight down and there'll be no room for ones to grow outward. So that's not a viable option, although it is a beautiful pot. This one here is a rectangular pot. There's lots of room in there for the tree to grow into. I quite like how it's looking in this also because the width of the tree is over the same width of the pot. So it gives it sort of a visual stability having the pot rectangular like that and wide. Let's see another option here. This is a bowl that I've drilled a hole in. I got this in like a charity shop. This is another option here. If I had that raised in the pot, it would give it some room to grow into also. And again, another option here I have is this little plastic bonsai training pot. But again, just like that one, I just feel that it's a little too small to encourage the tree to get better. I think what I'm going to go with is this pot here. And I got this one in Herons when I was over last year. I think it's quite fitting for this little tree. It's gonna go into this pot for now, perhaps for one year or two years, just until the roots fill the pot. And then once that happens, I'll come back, take it out of the pot, prune the roots, and then perhaps after that, put it into a pond basket. Right now, I think it'll do quite fine in here. So before we put a tree into the pot, we're first going to prepare the pot. So I've got two little squares here of mesh already cut out. I'm just taking some of the wire that we took off the air layering, and we're gonna use that to wire it in. So this wire is about two millimeter. We just fold it to make a U-shape, put it through the mesh, then through the pot. And then the other side, we can fold this down like that. And that just holds the mesh in place for us. Same again, make a U-shape through the mesh into the pot. All right, so the pot's now prepared. Let's get some soil into this. And the soil mix that I'll be using today is a mix of pumice, akadama, and lava rock. This is just my standard bonsai soil mix. There's quite a lot of fines in the soil as this hasn't been sieved. And what I like to do is take this scoop here. This is a scoop with a sieve built into it. So whenever I scoop some soil and do this, all the fines filter out for me. So I'm gonna start by just putting a layer of soil in the bottom of the pot. And then we're gonna make a little mountain in the middle. I got some people asking me why the Akadama in my bonsai soil mix is red. And it's not your conventional Akadama that you would have just plain Akadama. It's actually semi-fired Akadama, which means it's been fired at a high temperature for a while. That way it doesn't break down as quickly and it lasts longer and you can reuse the soil. I find semi-fired Akadama to be a little bit better than normal Akadama. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna feed some wire up through the bottom of this and this will be to hold the tree in place. And now we can take our little apple tree and put it right on top of the mountain. As I put it on, I'm twisting it down. And the reason why we do this is to prevent an air gap from forming under the root ball. And now that I have the tree positioned just how I would like it in the pot, we can then fill up the rest with more soil. Once I've got the tree now pretty stable and you really want to ensure that the tree doesn't wobble at all from any wind as any small wobbles will prevent new roots from growing. So you really want that tree to be super strong and solid in the pot. And then with the gin pliers, I'm just going to grab this wire here and just tighten it. I can feel now that's really solid in the pot. So I've worked out all the air gaps. And finally, what I'm going to do is just cover the top layer here in a little bit of sphagnum moss. And this will help keep the humidity levels up in the soil so that it doesn't dry out as quick. And the moment I notice any new growth on the top of the tree, that is when I'll come in then and remove that top layer of sphagnum. You don't wanna leave the sphagnum on here too long. Otherwise you will get the roots of the tree growing up into the sphagnum where ideally you want the roots growing downward. I'm really happy with this. All that's left to do now is give the tree a water.
And now finally, what to do with the other piece of the tree. I'm gonna prepare this for air layering next year and I'm sort of gonna plan it in my mind of how I want the next little tree to look like. So I'm gonna prune some of these branches and I'm also gonna tidy up the top here. And I'm really just gonna prune things that I think are a little bit too long. Like see this one here? I'm gonna keep this one because it's growing right at the base and any that I have at the base, I want to keep in order to try and thicken the very base of the trunk. That way, whenever I air layer this down and down and down, when I finally get to the bottom, if I keep all these lower branches that's connected to the bottom, we'll get a big swelling in that area and we'll get a good taper in the trunk. And that way we're sort of using the idea of inverse taper to our advantage, deliberately letting the bottom area swell. And these are known as sacrificial branches. So I'm gonna keep that one. Even up here, this one goes over and then straight up. So that's straight upness I don't like. So I'm gonna cut that off. I'm just encouraging the tree to back bud, pushing the growth back on it. This one's quite long and cut that to here. It's not gonna look very good after this prune, but it's just the idea of getting it to back bud more. I could even cut that right into here. Now I'm going to clean up this stump here on the top. It's rotting a little and drying out on one side of it. So I'm gonna reduce this just a little bit to make this cut a little cleaner. I'm also keeping in mind that this is going to be the apex of the next tree. Oh yeah, you could also count the rings on this. So let me just cut this back so you can count the rings. I think it's pretty tough to see on an apple how many rings there are. Like if I look really close, I can see like little tiny, tiny lines. But there's so many that it all looks like the one color. This is a little view of the cross section of the tree. My grandmother assured me that this was 50 years old. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is just cover this with a little bit of cut putty to seal the wound. That will prevent any other problems that may come along with it like fungus or bacteria. Let me just clean up this cut a little more. And when you push on cut putty, you want your finger to be wet with some water. Otherwise it just sticks to your finger like this. That's no good. So I place it on and then with your wet finger, push it down. And when your finger's wet, it won't stick to your finger at all. And we can just continue to spread this around. It's important that you cover the edges of the cut as that's where it's gonna heal and callus over from. That looks pretty good to me. And you can, of course, if you wish to, propagate the apple from cutting. These roots super easily. You don't even need rooting hormone, although you can use it if you want to. I've done so many apple cuttings before and every single one of them has rooted. Not once have I had an apple cutting fail on me. So what you do is take one of the little off cuttings, strip off the lower leaves, and then from this point, if you want, dip it in rooting powder and then stick it into soil half as deep as the cutting is. And then it should root within about a month. And on that, I'm going to end off this video right here. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like on this video. It really helps out the channel a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Perhaps you would have did this a little differently. Maybe you would have did a single air layering. Honestly, this tree could have been made into a single air layering, but I think for demonstration purposes, this tree was a good example to use and it had flushed out roots so early in the year, we had a whole extra month to develop more. If you would like to support me and the things that I do on this channel, hit the thanks button down below. And if you would like to stay updated on all the things that I do off camera, please follow me on Instagram. It's at Notion Bonsai and you'll be able to see all the things that I do on there. But on that, thank you so very much for watching.